In my quest to explore every corner of the Spyro series, I've seen a lot. I've seen games that are absolutely brilliant, I've seen games that are absolutely horrendous, and I've seen games that are absolutely between brilliant and horrendous. Unfortunately, the most recent stretch of Spyro games has been leaning towards the horrendous side. Anyone of sane mind would notice this pattern and decide not to pursue the series any further because clearly, there will only be more misery and heartbreak to come. But I'm not like them. I'm not like these weak-willed cowards. I hunger for more Spyro, like a vacuum cleaner sucking up every crumb it can find. It doesn't matter if it's fresh or stale. I want it to be inside me. I want it within the walls of my fortress of flesh. I want to consume every last drop until I'm left writhing on the floor, naked and alone, crying and screaming, and wondering if I'll ever be happy again. Which brings us to Spyro Shadow Legacy. Much like many of the Spyro games I've played in this journey, I have no idea what Spyro Shadow Legacy is. I know it's on the DS, and I'm expecting it to be something along the lines of what the GBA games tried to do. No, not that one, I mean the ones that deserve to be talked about. They attempted to capture the magic of classic Spyro, and I expect Shadow Legacy will try a similar sort of thing. I also expect the game will be fucking bad. I just have a gut feeling that's telling me that I'm going to walk out of this experience with emotional diarrhea. I've got my spare pair of undies ready, and Spyro Shadow Legacy is on my screen, so let's see how it went. After a brief exposition of a looming threat that is kept extremely vague, rendering the whole exposition completely worthless, the game begins with Hunter mocking Spyro for locking himself in his bedroom. Spyro must do a series of jumps to find the key and get himself out. We then head downstairs and light a fire to this other dragon's kitchen as per his request. For this, we are awarded with 50 XP. What? We then go outside and explore for a bit. Aside from slaughtering some innocent wildlife, there isn't a whole lot to do, so we fetch Bianca who meets up with Hunter and... <sighs> blink at the docks. We are then presented with what is probably the worst exchange of dialogue in video game history. Listen to this. Well that's that! Vacation is officially over! Yeah, but it's time to go. I need to get back to my cousins. They're a mess without me. What a responsible bunny rabbit. Shut up. What are you gonna do now, Spyro, now that we're leaving? You're gonna be bored silly without us. Ew, school. You're going to study with the elders? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. School is so exciting. Are you kidding? Spyro's gonna learn some sweet tricks. Like what? Magic. You know, transmogrification, prestigitation, levitation, you name it. What? No way. Cool. I want to learn how to presti... prestigitate... er... levitate. The Elder's magic is really powerful. In fact... Well, just be careful. Sounds like the little bunny knows a lot about magic. Maybe I do. Sounds like the little bunny learned a few tricks from the sorceress back in the day. That's none of your business. All aboard! Psst. They're already aboard. Bye, Spyro. See you next year. Bye! Don't do anything I wouldn't do! And watch out for those spooky elders! Ooh. Shut up, Hunter! Who wrote that? This is bad. It's so immature, even for a game targeted at children. There are enough little bunnies and shut ups to feed a starving family for a year. It's amazing how these characters said so much but at the same time, said nothing at all. God, how do Americans speak like that all the time? It's so uncomfortable on the mouth. And every word takes so much effort to wrap your lips around. Like, you poor people. <laughs> you should have never revolted against Britain. Trust me, your accent would have been better off. <laughs> Sorry, that's probably pretty rude, actually. <laughs> 
After the little bunny shut-ups are done with, Spyro takes a nap on the beach where he is suddenly interrupted by a bolt of lightning that sucks everyone and everything into a world of darkness known as the Shadow Realm. What was once a peaceful beach has now been infested with disgusting, demonic Shadow Realm creatures. Spyro is spoken to telepathically by a Dragon Elder, who commands him to head to the Dragon Dojo to help rescue him and the other Dragon Elders. Spyro is granted the use of the Shadow Stone, which will allow him to phase between the Shadow Realm and reality when he interacts with a dimensional portal. It is Spyro's job to rescue everyone from the dark depths of the Shadow Realm and take down whoever is behind it. What the fuck? The tone of this game is very strange. When you're in reality, everything is relatively calm and somewhat cheery, but then you've got the contrast of the Shadow Realm, which is ominous, eerie, and filled with these disgusting shadow minions. It kind of gives you whiplash. As a story premise though, it actually isn't that bad. I mean, it's nothing to write home about, and there are some story beats that are just ridiculous, but the Spyro series has had worse. To be honest though, I much prefer the stories my little brother tells me. My favourite is called Lachlan the Banshee. Once upon a time, there was a Banshee called Lachlan the Banshee. Lachlan the Banshee has a GPS, and plays with his GPS in class, and plays Mario Kart on his GPS, and also is a GPS. He has wild teeth like a bad cop, and he's a huge Monster Jam fan, and if you go on the App Store and look up Lachlan the Banshee, it will come up with Lachlan the Banshee is a Monster Jam fan. The end. That's a much better story, wouldn't you agree? Being tasked with saving the entire population from the Shadow Realm so that they don't have their magic drained sounds like quite a daunting task. If it were me, I would simply give up and succumb to our mysterious Dark Overlord. But not Spyro, this is just another day in the life for him. But how does one go about doing this? By using a dimensional portal, Spyro can phase into the Shadow Realm. In a given area, whether you call that a village, a town, a settlement, a colony, a city, or whatever, there will be civilians locked behind gates and guarded by a number of shadow minions. Spyro needs to use his combat abilities to defeat the shadow minions and free all the civilians in the area. After they're freed, they return to reality, and once they're all freed, Spyro can return to reality to chat to them, where they might give Spyro a quest to complete. There are main quests which reward Spyro with relics, which are required to progress, and there are also side quests that are optional. They often involve simply finding an item, or two, or three, and returning them to an NPC. Completing quests rewards Spyro with XP. With enough XP, Spyro will level up, and by returning to the Elders in the Dojo, Spyro can learn more magic spells. These spells are activated by drawing a symbol on the touchscreen. One allows you to fast travel, one allows you to move certain objects to make some platforming possible, one is an offensive shock spell that rids enemies of magical armor, one is supposed to be a spell that attacks multiple enemies that I never used, and one is used to reflect the final boss's projectiles. Leveling up also increases Spyro's HP for survival, and MP for using magic, and also grants Spyro the opportunity to learn more combat abilities, so he can defeat enemies more easily. Defeating enemies rewards Spyro with more XP, and they also drop items. Enemies in normal reality drop butterflies that restore health, and enemies in the Shadow Realm drop mushrooms to restore magic. They also all drop gems, which act as currency in the same way as the gems in a hero's tale, and can be used to buy butterflies, mushrooms, keys, quest items, and all sorts of other things. Did you get all of that? Spyro Shadow Legacy has a lot of ideas. It tries to do a lot of things. It's a mishmash of elements from different genres, including but not limited to action adventure games, RPGs, hack and slashes, platformers, and puzzle games. It really is a Frankenstein's monster of a video game. But maybe what this game is will become clear if we just keep going. After saving the Dragon Elders, Spyro is sent south to a town of dragons to rescue them. The path there is a giant plane with fuck all in it besides a few enemies, so really it was just a leisurely stroll. Once arriving at the town, you do the exact same thing as you did to free the elders. Run around the place, do a tiny bit of platforming, and kill all the shadow minions. Speak to the civilians, and complete their quests if you can be bothered. After that, you can head either south or west of the town. I went west, and after getting stuck between two signs, flailing about and accidentally launching myself into the sky, exposing the void behind reality, I went to the next location in the big forest where you… do exactly the same thing as before. Kill all the shadow minions, free the civilians, and do a quest or two to earn a relic. And this process repeats, and repeats, and repeats, until the end of the game. This is such a strange game, and I have to say, not a very enjoyable one. 
Aside from my unintentionally enormous glitch jump, nothing about this game has entertained me at all. No part of it has been fun. The best part has been the boss fights because they at least require some sort of thought, but even they aren't very good. They're extremely unremarkable as far as boss fights go. I just don't really know what this game is trying to do. It does a lot of things, but everything it does do, it doesn't do very well. This is such a nothing game. I mean, let's break this down. Spyro Shadow Legacy is an action-adventure game. You explore a world filled with towns and areas that connect them in order to make your way to the big bad boss at the very end. But the world is extremely boring to explore. The only thing even remotely interesting in the towns are the NPCs who give you quests, and the only thing of note outside the towns are the shops. They're otherwise completely empty with fuck all to do. You might be lucky and run into an enemy, but that 5 second encounter is all you get. Those outside areas are also really small, so even when you're exploring, you don't get to do it for very long. There isn't much to explore. It's like Spyro is exploring a suburban backyard. There just isn't much to see. Spyro Shadow Legacy is an RPG. You go around towns talking to NPCs and completing quests for them, earning XP as a reward. But the quests in Quest, Shin, are almost always a fetch quest, where you look around that specific town for an item and bring it back to the NPC, which is fine for basic quests, but when every single quest is the same thing, it becomes tiresome. XP allows Spyro to level up, gain more HP and MP, and learn new abilities that help in exploration, but mainly combat. Speaking of, Spyro Shadow Legacy is a hack and slash game. The main objective of the game is to save people from the Shadow Realm, and this is done by beating the shit out of Shadow Minions. But the combat is so fucking bad. Most of the time you can just spam Spyro's basic horn attack, and the enemies can't even touch you. Sometimes you will need to use a special move to break the armor on enemies who have it, but after that, you still only need to spam the horn attack. You learn all these other moves as you level up, but you never really need to use them. The combat is mindless and boring and repetitive, and it is the main thing you do in the game. It's even worse when the enemies have so much HP that it feels like they're just never going to kill over and die. The best of the combat comes out in the boss fights, but even there it's very lacklustre. It's just fucking dreadful. Spyro Shadow Legacy is a platformer. Very rarely mind you, but it does come up occasionally. There are instances where you're required to jump up to places and glide somewhere. It's very rare, but it happens. But the platforming is actually dog shit. Spyro himself is quite slow, his jump is pathetic, and he's only ever required to jump up onto a ledge or over a small pit. Sometimes you have to glide somewhere, but that's not very often. And what kills this whole aspect of the game is that the environment is clearly not designed for platforming. It's presented in a way that makes it very hard to tell the depth of a platform and how high things actually are. Sometimes it's even hard to tell what you can touch and walk on, or how you're even supposed to get from point A to point B. I mean, look at this cliff here in Clifftown. This is the only way I could find to get to the top of this cliff, but it's clearly very awkward and inconsistent, so much so that it barely works. It works sometimes, but it's clearly not what you're supposed to do. But what am I supposed to do? There's no other way up there that I can find. All the areas in this game have minimal platforming, but when it's there, it is genuinely horrible. Even Spyro Orange had better platforming than this game. Spyro Shadow Legacy is a puzzle game. Partially because the game has very small and infrequent moments where you need to figure something out, but mainly because I'm puzzled as to why this game is the way it is. I just can't wrap my head around it. What were they going for with this game? No part of the gameplay is fun or interesting, it's just a chimera of half-baked ideas stuck together in the most dull and boring of ways. I played the game all the way to the end, and I wish I hadn't. It was such a waste of time. I could have done anything with that time. I could have gone on a trip across the country and seen all the big cities, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Darwin, Perth, Adelaide, Hobart, the other one. I could have taken up tennis again, I could have written a book, learned to be a shoemaker, crafted an intricate and delicate ecosystem inside of an empty beer bottle, I could have done so much, but instead I spent five hours playing this shit. For Spyro, this is a new low. Which brings me to this. Spyro Shadow Legacy is a Spyro game. 
This is true in the sense that it has Spyro characters and locations in it. Beyond that, there is nothing Spyro about Shadow Legacy. The characters are present, but their personalities are not. Hunter has been reduced to saying, Little Bunny! And Bianca has been reduced to saying, Shut up! Blink's very existence was a crime to begin with. The Professor has turned into this anti-magic boomer who gives off similar vibes to a climate change denier. And Red, who was literally a villain for one game before this, appears, goes down to two hits, and reveals he was mind controlled the whole time, and that the real bad guy is someone else. These aren't the characters I know, just cheap imitations. I didn't even have strong feelings about most of these characters, but their representation in this game still manages to wind me up. They deserve better. Except Blink. Fuck Blink. There are familiar locations, but only in namesake. Places like Clifftown and Treetops exist in this game, but are nowhere near the level of quality here as they were in their original forms. Look at the original Clifftown with its distinct vibe and geography, with that memorable glide over the town and across the river. Look at the original Treetops with its soothing atmosphere and intricately and well-designed supercharged ramps. Look at the majesty of these levels. Now, look at this. Look at these horrible, unremarkable, demon-ridden shitholes that claim the same name. How dare they steal those names and leech off of their glory. They don't even look good. This entire game looks incredibly generic and uninspired, and the music is in a similar boat. It just isn't memorable or interesting. Sometimes, there isn't even music at all. It's just ambience and birdsong. Although, it's probably better that way. This game isn't exactly trying hard to be good in any respect, so the music probably wouldn't be much better than the sound of chucking squirrels into a wood chipper. I think what's most unnerving about this whole thing is that throughout the entire game, from the very beginning to the very end, Spyro does not say a word. He doesn't even speak. Aside from the occasional grunt, nothing. There's just something so cold and lifeless about it. Spyro won't even interact with this game. And really, that says it all. I refuse to believe that this is a Spyro game. I must be in some sort of Shadow Realm myself, because this is some sick, twisted distortion of what Spyro is meant to be. How did we get here? Think back to when this all began. Spyro, the purple dragon hero, raring to go and save his crystallized dragon brethren from the comically evil nasty Nork, exploring beautiful and atmospheric levels in search of gems with gameplay that was fun and satisfying. How did we go from that to Spyro, the silent detached protagonist, slowly plodding his way through a world void of soul and personality, and travelling to a dark alternate dimension, attacking Satan's sentient cum drops, earning meaningless XP and being bored shitless. What happened? Spyro Shadow Legacy is fucking horrible, no matter which way you look at it. The gameplay, and by that I mean every single one of its aspects, the exploration, the combat, the platforming, the XP system, all of it, is incredibly dull and repetitive. The game's presentation is fairly lacklustre, with generic and boring environments, and a very forgettable soundtrack. The characters are empty husks of their former selves, and the story is, at best, mediocre. I'd rather play a game about Lachlan the Banshee. I'm just gonna say it. Spyro Shadow Legacy is the worst Spyro game. Bold statement, but I genuinely believe that to be true. Previously, I would have given the dishonor to Spyro Orange, which in itself was a crime against humanity, but the key difference is this. I can imagine someone having fun with Spyro Orange. I mean, that person is clearly fucked up and needs to be institutionalized for their own safety, but I can imagine someone having fun with that game. There is at least the teensiest, tiniest sliver of a possibility of potentially enjoying that game. With Shadow Legacy? Impossible. I cannot imagine anyone, even brain-dead hardcore Spyro fans, having fun with this. I don't even think the people who made this game could have fun with this. It's not the worst game I've ever played, but fuck me, it's up there. I've never wanted to kill myself, and I'm fairly confident I never will. But doing that would have landed me in a much nicer hell than this one. Spyro Shadow Legacy is easily the worst game in the series so far. So far, there are still more games after this. <sighs> Fuck's sake, what have I gotten myself into?